So again, welcome everyone to getting started choosing a sperm donor with Fairfax Cryobank. I am Michelle Audie. I am the director of the lab and director of operations at Fairfax Cryobank. Morgan Barker, our senior marketing manager is gonna be moderating our questions and we will be joined by Christy Burke, our assistant director of client services for the Q&A at the end. Our goals for today's webinar are to go over the donor categories, review some of our donor products. I'm gonna do a live donor search demonstration on the website. And then I'll present some information about our donor selection services, and we'll talk about some resources that we offer to all of our recipients. The bottom line is we wanted to present a webinar to you to help you find your ideal donor match. We'll have a Q&A session at the end as well. So to get started, we just wanted to get a sense of where all of you are in your process. So we're gonna do a quick poll to see where you are. Um, please indicate what stage in the donation selection process you're at. Have you started but not selected a donor? Are you just searching now, trying to narrow it down? Or are you all ready to go? Just, you can choose your answer right there on the screen. Great. Okay, fantastic. Looks like we've got the majority of our attendees are just getting started. You haven't picked your donor yet. So this is the perfect place for you. Um, another big group, about 33% of you are just have started searching, but you're still narrowing things down. I hope that you'll find the content helpful. And then we've got 5% um, that have already selected their do donor and ordered, but I do hope that you'll find some of the information helpful today, especially the section on resources. Okay, thank you for participating in that. So I do a lot of family building seminars and talks in person and the most common question I get is how do I even get started? So what I really like to recommend to people is that you just sit down and really think about and create a list of characteristics that you value. Things that are important to you, things like physical characteristics, ethnic background, personality, education, and I have donor category here on the slide. We're gonna go through that in more detail, but what I mean by donor category is, do you wanna use a donor that's willing to be known, or do you wanna use a non-ID donor? We do have over 460 donors on our, uh, on our donor search right now, so that can be a little bit daunting. The purpose of today's webinar is to help you navigate getting started in that process. And by creating this list of characteristics that you value, it's, it's gonna help you to get started on narrowing down that, that list from 460 to a more manageable number. So three important things to consider, donor brand code, donor category, and specimen types. These are the three things I wanna go through with you before we go to the live web search. The web, the live web search. By working with Fairfax Cryobank, you're actually getting the opportunity to potentially purchase three different high quality donor brands. In 2000, Fairfax Cryobank acquired cryogenic laboratories. You may find that the donor that you connect with on the website is a CLI brand donor. We also acquired Pacific Reproductive Services in 2017. Pacific Reproductive was a great cryobank that was lesbian owned and founded on the West Coast. We acquired them when the founder and owner decided to retire. So we have a handful of Pacific Reproductive Service or PRS donors available on our website as well. All three of these brand codes are high quality donor sperm. So as you're going through the donor search, if you are a legacy PRS client or a legacy CLI client, you can specifically search for PRS or CLI donors, or you can leave it open and see what you come up with. In terms of donor categories, we offer two donor categories, non-ID donors and ID donors. Non-ID donors participate in the sperm donor program. They provide all of the same uh, non-identifying information as our ID donors, they have really robust profiles, both personal and medical, but they've asked not to have their identifying information released to the recipients or adult children. ID donors are the opposite. They have agreed to allow us, Fairfax Cryobank, to release identifying information upon request 
to your registered child once they reach the age of 18. We will not release identifying information to recipients, only to the adult children. And uh, just a side note, starting in January of 2020, Fairfax Cryobank is only bringing in donors to the program that are participating as ID. We do have a lot of non-ID donors available on the website if that is what you are interested in. And then lastly, I wanted to touch on specimen types because you're gonna need this information when you're ready to place your order. I'm gonna just go through and explain this. And if there are more questions about this, the prep types, we can, we can address that in the Q&A at the end. We sell several prep types to meet the needs of our clients. We sell an ICI or intracervical insemination preparation. This is a standard sample with at least 10 million total modal sperm. It is not washed to remove the seminal fluid. So basically the donor produces his sample. We do a semen evaluation. We ensure that it is the proper quality to meet the standard. It has a freeze media added to help protect the cells during that, <coughs> excuse me, freeze thaw process. And then it's frozen. We also produce an intrauterine or IUI prep. Excuse me. This is a pre-wash sample. This removes <clears throat> all of the seminal fluid from the sample. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, allergies. <clears throat> Excuse me. The IUI preps have the seminal fluid removed from the sperm. The samples wash to remove that seminal fluid and the sperm are resuspended in a freeze media. And again, this also has at least 10 million total modal cells. <clears throat> we also then have the assisted reproductive technology or ART preparation types. These can be either ICI or IUI. The purpose of these was to, excuse me, present um, a, an option for individuals who may be undergoing IVF and don't need the full 10 million total modal cells. So we do produce some art preps. We try to produce some art preps on each of our donors. Now, you can combine two art prep type vials for one insemination. So just to sort of summarize, the ICI prep type is an unwashed sample that would be used for an intracervical insemination. It can also then be washed to be used for an IUI or intrauterine insemination. The IUI prep type is already pre-washed for you. It is a little more expensive. The ICI is, um, costs less because th there was no wash. And then the ART samples have fewer total modal cells, but you can purchase two to combine for one insemination. If there are questions about this. We can definitely revisit this at the end. So you're going to see when I go to the website, <clears throat> excuse me, that there's a lot of donor information to review to help you choose your donor. There are a lot of free products and I'm gonna go through each of these on the website. And then there are also products for purchase. These are some really good products that may help you to choose your donor. So we have um, several options for you when it comes to purchasing those products. And I'll go through that on the website. Before we get started with that, I wanna mention the Fairfax Phase Match. This is a great interactive tool that you can use to help select your donor. It uses a sophisticated mathematical technology similar to what the FBI uses for facial recognition. To compare a photo that you're gonna to upload to the website, it's gonna compare that photo to the bank of adult photos of our donors that we use internally, and it's gonna give you matches. So this is a way that you can potentially um, narrow down that list of 460 using an image. Now, keep in mind, this is about facial similarities. This doesn't mean that if you upload a picture, it's gonna, the donor looks exactly like that person. It just means that it has similar characteristics, perhaps a similar jawline, similar cheekbones and brow. And I'm gonna show you an example of that. I do wanna recommend our unlimited access packages. These are really good options if you don't have a specific donor in mind and you wanna be able to access information on several donors to really narrow down your choice and find that perfect match. You get access to various things for 90 days based on the package that you're gonna choose. The free access is what anybody who goes to the website is gonna see. You can access any of these items for free. And then of course we have the three tiers, the basic, the full, and the, base, and the full with club. 
um, you can see here through the check marks what you get additionally for that cost. And this is, remember, 90 days for every donor on the website. The benefit of the full access with Club is that you do also get some free shipping. If you buy five vials in 12 months, you get a six vial free, and you also get a preview of new donors before they're added to the actual catalog. Now you're gonna see when I go to the website, I'm not gonna have prices listed next to those pay items because I have um, access through one of the ULAs so that I can show you all of the products. But when you go to our website, which I do wanna give Morgan a shout out since she's on the call today, she has done an amazing job really um, giving our website a beautiful facelift. You know, it is so intuitive and really client friendly um, and Morgan did a great job with that. So thank you, Morgan. So when you go to the website, you can start even right here. You can just click right on some of these characteristics and click find a match. But what I'm gonna do is click here for more detailed information. The first thing I want to point out to you is that if you're not a U.S. resident, if you reside in Canada, the U.K., Germany, or Brazil, you can check, you can click the icons up here, and what it'll do is it will take you to a donor search that is specific for that country. Each of these countries requires different, um, has different regulatory requirements, so the donor the donors that are eligible to be exported um, into those countries may differ. So you wanna go right to your relevant country. I'm gonna stick here with the basic search and just go through and show you that you can really use any criteria to start looking for your perfect donor. So for our purposes, I'm just gonna show you the categories that you can choose from and then I'm gonna demonstrate on an actual donor profile for you some of the products. But you can see here under the basic search, if height was something that was important to you, let's say, um, I'm gonna use myself and my wife as an example. I'm six feet tall, she's 5'4". If she were gonna you know, carry the preg pregnancy, maybe we'd wanna go for a donor that was six, six foot to 6'2". Um, you know, we would choose our relevant ancestries. Maybe um, we would choose you know, the hair color that I have, brown or blonde, uh, to sort of balance out to, you know, to her dark hair. Um, we would choose eye color. Education is something that would be important. You can choose to have graduate level. What this means is that the donor has, um, is either pursuing or has a completed graduate education. If as you're going through this, there are any questions, you see these little question icons, it'll give you the answer right there. You just hover over it. If you're specifically interested in guys that have photos available, you can choose that. Um, if you know, for example, that you're only interested in purchasing one prep type, you can choose that here. I would always recommend not using that initially um, and just seeing what's available for the donors that you might be interested in. Now you'll see here, there are a lot of other things that we can add. Under the advanced search, you can get really, really specific. Here's where you can choose the brand code that we mentioned. You can get very specific with your ethnicity um, requests. Um, you know, for example, I grew up in a very Italian family, so maybe we wanted to choose Italian. Um, or if you know that you're, you know, if the person who's gonna carry the pregnancy feels very strongly about their Puerto Rican roots, you can choose that as something that you want to see in your donor. You can get really specific about skin tone and hair type. Um, if you know if your physician or medical provider has advised you on CMV status, you can choose that here. Um, if blood type is important, you can choose that here. If you need to consider RH factor, you also have that as an option. The genetic testing search is a great tool. I wanted to point this out. We did a webinar a couple weeks ago on the expanded carrier panel. We also, if you go to the Fairfax blog, we do have a blog post about the expanded panel genetic testing. I'd recommend taking a look at that. If you know that you're a carrier for a specific disease, you can actually um, check this box here and you'll be able to either enter by the disease or the gene and search for donors who've tested negative for that specific condition. I don't wanna go into a lot of detail about that because we have the webinar recording available for everyone if you do have specific questions. Under the lifestyle search, this is where it gets a little fun. You can search by astrological sign, favorite subject, 
If religion is something that you listed as one of the characteristics that's important to you, you can choose that here. Um, I know a lot of people feel real passionately about their pets. You can choose that here as well. Um, so there are a lot of things that you can do to narrow down the list. I would recommend not getting too, too specific initially, but um, once you have a list, you can get even more specific. What I thought I would do before we go to one of the donor profiles is to demonstrate the Fairfax face match. This is that great tool that I told you is an interactive way for you to upload a photo. Now, it doesn't have to be a male photo. You can upload a female photo. There are some uh, tips on you know, the best photos that you could upload here under the FAQs. Um, actually, I don't wanna do that right now, but it'll tell you, you know, get a photo that's straight on, full face, I have um, a photo saved. One of our staff really loves this photo of Brad Pitt. Um, so I'm gonna use that. Um, you could choose ancestry and eye color. I'm just gonna leave it open. But when you hit search, what will happen is this, the website runs through. This is the photo it used. It runs through and matches all these different points. And we actually got 20 matches for, for that photo. Now remember, these. this is not saying that donor 6056 looks just like Brad Pitt. What this means is that he is a medium facial similarity match in the structure of his face. And you're gonna see high does not happen very often because we are all unique. Medium is good and low will also be listed sometimes. But in this instance, we do have 20 guys that came up. Now you could start with these 20 donors as your um, starting point to start narrowing things down. Um, if there are questions about face match, we can answer that at the end. So I just wanted to go through some of uh, one of the donor profiles um, to talk about some of the products that we offer. And I just love this childhood photo of donor 5387. He's such a little charmer. He has a great smile. Um, he is a great donor and our staff that works with him just loves him. So I thought I would use him as an example. This is um, one of our donors that basically has all of this information here for free. Now, please keep in mind that this section would normally have prices listed, but as I mentioned, I have the ULA access, so it's listed as free. What you're gonna see when you choose a donor, so actually let's, let's start from, um, from the beginning. So this is the donor search. If I were to search for a specific donor, I can do that here. What you'll have is this little um, sort of screenshot here of the donor profile. I click that and it takes me right to his individual profile. You get a nice summary that's pulled from the staff impressions and some of the profile information and you get a really great snapshot. So we know this donor's height, we have his weight, his eye color, his skin tone, hair and blood. And then we've got his ancestry, ethnic background, we see that he has a bachelor in music performance. He's a health coach. Um, he has varied interests. We do have reported pregnancies. And what, what that means is that either the donor has a child himself or a recipient has reported a pregnancy or birth. So you have this great snapshot here. And something I'd love to point out is a new feature on the website, which is similar donors. So if, for example, this was a great donor, but you weren't 100% sure, you could always look down here and the system is gonna generate similar donors for you. Or if this is a good match and he doesn't necessarily have the preparation type that you're interested in, one of these guys may. So this is just a great tool for you to um, see other donors that have similar characteristics. In terms of the products, we have the summary profile, which when you click on it, it'll, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a summary profile. It's gonna give you a snapshot of his medical, his family medical. I know I'm gonna scroll through this quickly, but you have, you'll all have access to this when you're on the website. The one thing I really wanna point out on the summary profile is this last box, updates to profile. We are the only cryobank at this time that is actively reaching out to our retired donors to complete a profile update annually. So the donors receive an email from us, they log into a secure website and they'll provide updates. For example, if a grandparent or parent has passed away, if they've had a child, if they've finished a degree, all of that information would be updated here. It's also getting updated while they're in the program, but more specifically, 
we felt that this was important because their initial medical profile is a snapshot in time, right? It's, it's information collected at the beginning of their donation process. And obviously that's gonna change over time as we all age. So we wanted to provide a free downloadable option for you all to get that updated information. We have these great staff impressions, which um, are generated by the staff that are working directly with the donor. They, they'll do a write-up on the donor's physical appearance and his personality. Um, our staff loves to do these staff impressions because they're so excited to be able to describe the donor and really help you all to get a sense of his characteristics and personality. The donor essays are a great tool for you as well. This is this really gives you a good insight into the donor. These are, you know, almost all the donors have the same questions, um, but the donor submits this and we uploaded it onto the profile for you to see things like what's the funniest thing that ever happens or, you know, if you have children, what information would you like to pass on to them? So that's another really great tool to give you a sense into the donor. We do have these audio clips here available, and I'd like to play the audio clip of this donor for you. Donor 5387 tells us how he likes to spend time with his family. I like to spend time with my family in their creative hobbies. So if it's with my mother, she really likes um, like painting. She likes to paint. She likes to um, do arts and crafts. So I'll do that with her. With my father, he likes golf. He likes sports and running. So we'll do those things. Siblings, um, yes, yeah, siblings like riding. We can talk about that. Just meeting them in their hobbies and in their likes. So you can hear from that little audio clip. That's a 40 second clip taken from the full audio interview. In this instance, the audio interview is for pay um, it, and it is an 18 minute interview. The clip is taken from that. So the audio clips are a great way to hear the donor's voice, to get a, a short sense of his personality. He's 5387 is obviously very thoughtful um, and sweet. So you know, the full audio gives you even more insight. It talks, it's a conversation between the donor and one of our staff members. And they do this conversational interview to talk about his likes, his dislikes, his favorite books and movies and memories and vacations and things. And really the goal of the audio interview is to really give you an in-depth dive into the donor's personality. We also have a staff audio clip <clears throat> for each of our donors, excuse me, that is our staff talking about the donor. And in this instance, um, the staff really likes this donor. Donor 5387 loses himself in whichever moment life leads him to. Thankful for every day, this donor practices meditation and enjoys the calm of artistic ventures, such as learning and practicing the art of origami while growing up. His connection to music and to his inner self is important to his exploration of the world around him, as he believes it's what keeps him grounded even in the present age of political and social turmoil. A wordsmith at heart and well-practiced at it, do not challenge this donor to a game of Scrabble, for his expansive vocabulary will likely best you. However, he is never boastful about his knowledge. He will be humble in his victory and likely let you win the next round due to his benevolent character. So the, as you can hear, the audio clip is just a little, a little clip of our staff giving you their impression of the donor. The medical profile is probably the most important free product that we have. You're going to see that this is a very in-depth, long medical profile of not just the donor, but the donor's family. And again, these are free online for you to view, so I'm not going to go through them in detail. But if you are going through and you have questions about anything, you can always chat with our CS reps to ask those questions. The genetic testing information is also important. This is going to be a downloadable PDF. You'll be able to view the genetic test that the donor had, his result, and then there'll be comments here about residual risk. This donor had his testing completed at Recombine, um, and you actually get to see the, the genetic testing lab's results here as well. <clears throat> You'll see some of the donors will have had recombine and some of the donors will, the, our newer donors will have been tested via semaphore. Um, all of that information again is going to be in that genetic testing webinar that I recommended. 
Now, some of the pay products that people find very helpful, and this is, again, why I'm going to recommend that um, unlimited access package to you, because you'll be able to view these from multiple donors, would be the personal profile. This is extensive. If you click on any of these, you're going to get a ton of information. You can scroll through all of it. But I'm just going to show you, um, for example, under physical features, this is going to be really detailed information about this donor, all of these different measurements about his um, sizes and, and measurements. Um, he wears glasses, single vision for nearsightedness. Um, he, you know, we then, the donor will then rank his uh, facial characteristics and we will verify those through photos. Um, like, you know, if you want to know about his eyebrows, he's got a medium arch on an average, you know, thick, thickness with a, an average set of the eyebrow. There's so much minute detail here that you're able to view. His cheekbones, the shape of his mouth, his teeth. There's so much to see um, about the donor's characteristics. Um, I'm just going to scroll back up to the top and you'll see there's there are a ton of um, options here. We can even see if we wanted to see the maternal family's information, we can see the level of education of the maternal grandfather, the, you know, how many siblings the grandparents had. There really is a plethora of information in these personal profiles. Um, and then, you know, I, I, the childhood photos are free on all of our donors right now. They're, they're the, um, the little photo here. There are more of them, though. I'm not going to click on our photo options before individuals are able to get access to those. You do have to sign a terms of use that um, specifies that you're not going to share the photos wide, widely. And so we didn't want to um, put those photos up on the up on the screen. The last product that I want to highlight is the personality type. This is um, this, I love this. This is basically giving you, it's almost like a Myers-Briggs type personality test. And this donor, for example, is INFP, which means that he's more introverted, intuitive, feeling, and perceiving. And it gives you a nice description and some common traits. A lot of recipients will actually go online and take personality tests and look for donors with similar personalities to their own. So that's an overview of the products that we have. Um, and uh, if you are ready to order, if, for example, you thought this was the perfect donor for you and you're ready to go ahead, you can either place your order here online and add it to your cart. You can chat with our customer service agents or you can call in to place your order. Okay, the next, the next uh, bit of information I wanted to go over is our photo, or sorry, our donor selection services. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. I'm having some allergy issues today. Okay, if you're trying to match your prospective donor to a spouse, a family member, a celebrity, or even yourself, our client services team can help. They're fantastic and really willing to help you narrow down your choices. You have several options here. You can work with them um, through a photo match where you send them eight or fewer donor numbers and provide, a, provide them with photos, and then they're gonna rank them for you in terms of resemblance. It's almost like face match, but, um, but by a person. And then the second option is to give all of the criteria that's important to you, as well as some photos, and then the CS staff will narrow it down and give you a list of donors. The more comprehensive option is the selection consultation, where you would have an in-depth counseling session with one of our CS specialists who's gonna work with you one-on-one -on -one to, to pick your perfect donor. If you have questions about those services, Christy will be able to answer them at the end. Um, you can also see more information online. And then the last thing I wanted to point out were the resources that we have for all of you. Um, we're especially excited about <clears throat> excuse me, our Fairfax blog. Here we go. The blog, as you can see, is updated pretty frequently. You can see right now we've got a great Pride Month celebration post. When you click on this, it'll take you to the actual longer post. That you can read here. We've got some great um, testimonials from families. On that previous page for the blog, you can actually subscribe to the blog here, and each time there's a new post, you'll get a notification. 
you can choose to read different categories. You can just scroll through the archive and read as many of the posts as you want. Another resource is our newsletter and this beautiful new page. Um, I believe Alexis really worked on this. So Alexis, shout out to you. Great job on this. Um, you can enter your information here, your first name, last name, and email. And basically you're gonna get a newsletter monthly at least with promotions and giveaways, announcements of new donors, different testimonials, tips, and any updates that we have for you. And then the last thing that I wanted to point out is our Fair Fairfax Family Forums. Now, I know when you look at this, it looks a little old, and it is. We've had this for quite some time, but the Family Forums are getting a facelift and a complete overall overhaul to make them more user friendly. But in the meantime, this is such a great resource. We post information in the forums here. There are discussion forums, regardless of you know where you're coming from in terms of your own fertility journey, I'm sure you'll be able to connect with someone. As you can see, we have thousands of posts. And then um, once you have a child, it, you register, you are going to report that to us and you can gain access to the private forums by, by donor number. This is a great place to connect with other people who've used your same donor and potentially to make connections with half siblings. Our newest feature is this great donor conceived connection. So basically when your child is 18 or older, they would be able to join a private room that would connect them to half siblings. We're really trying to meet your needs by providing these services all in one place that can be accessed from our website. If you go to the main website, these are all easy to navigate under resources. You can see here it's the newsletter, the blog, and the family forums. They're all right there under resources for you. So that's it. You're basically ready to get started. Our Amazing client service specialists are ready to help you. You can call in, you can email, you can chat. Um, there are various ways that our team can help you out. Um, and I hope that the information today provided was helpful. And I'd like to know if you thought it was by opening up a second poll to ask how confident you are in selecting your donor sperm at this point. Okay, you can choose beginner, still have learning to do, medium understanding, or you feel like an expert. Oh, I'm loving these answers. Great. We have about 10% of you that are still saying beginner, about 60 saying medium understanding, and 30% of you feel like experts. That is fantastic. Um, I'm glad that you all found this helpful, and I would like to offer this how to choose webinar promo code that if you log on and you register, you can basically get the full unlimited access package. It's a 90 day access for um, free of charge. It saves you $130 and this, this code will be good through June 30th. Um, so now I'd like to open, I'm gonna turn things over to Morgan who's going to moderate the question and answer section. Great, so we have some wonderful questions. One of them um, is asking if you could, Michelle, clarify again, what is CLI? Yes, so CLI is, is cryogenic laboratories. That's the um, sperm bank that we acquired in 2000. And we, do, we continued to produce CLI or cryogenic laboratories donors for several years. So we do have some CLI donors on our website. And then can you explain again why only ID donors will be added moving forward? Sure, we made the decision based on how society is changing and the regulatory environments, both domestically and internationally, have been changing over time. We're seeing that, you know, as, as with all fields, we want to evolve and continue to meet the needs of our recipients um, and, and also to the donor conceived children that we're helping to bring into this world. And what we're finding is that the majority of donor conceived children are very, or sorry, donor conceived individuals are interested in that potential for connection. So based on regulations, as I mentioned, both internationally and domestically, we've made the decision just to bring in donors who are willing to be known going forward. Okay. Another question we have here is, if I want to do an IUI, should I only choose IUI? No, if you are going to have an IUI, which is the intrauterine insemination 
um, which should be occurring with a medical provider, you can actually purchase any of the PrEP types. If you purchase an IUI vial, it doesn't need to be washed again. It's already had the seminal fluid washed. If you purchase an ICI, your clinic or your medical provider will have to wash it prior to the insemination. And you can purchase either ICI or IUI art vials. I would just recommend two of them to combine for one insemination. And then, an, a, sort of an, un, a related uh, follow-up question from someone else is, how do I know what type of sperm I will need? So where do they find that out? So that's going to come from the advice of your medical provider. Who's, whoever is going to be doing the insemination is going to advise you on that. And if you're planning on doing an at-home insemination, you really should still be working with a medical provider just to ensure your health and well-being prior to pregnancy, and they can help advise. If you're going to do an at-home insemination, you can purchase ICI. You can also use an IUI vial for an intracervical insemination. The difference between the two, we actually reviewed in a lot of detail in our home insem webinar, which you can also access through the blog. Great. Um, this one's for Christy. Do you provide Mandarin service? Which mailbox can I contact if I have questions? That's a great question, and yes, we definitely can assist. Um, if you can email our international team, which is global at fairfaxcryobank.com, we will be able to connect you with someone who can assist um, with your requests. Definitely, we can assist clients with that. And someone else asked, Christy, um, some donors have just the time glass for all prep types. I think she means like that hourglass icon. Can you mm -hmm. share a little bit more about why that might be? Yes. So if you see the hourglass symbol on the website, um, that means that the donor currently has a waiting list started, um, which means that there are not vials currently available, but there is a list of clients waiting to be contacted for if and when the vials become available again. Uh, so you can reach out to our CS team by phone, um, email, or chat, and we can give you a little bit more information about that if you have a donor number in mind, and if we're able to add you to the list, we'll do that. And is there a way, this is another question, is there a way to hold your donor sperm while your doctor confirms the genetic testing will be okay with yours? Yes, we can assist um, in certain situations. It will depend on the donor number and availability, um, but we do offer a seven-day courtesy hold um, in certain situations. So if that's uh, the case, I would recommend that um, you reach out to our CS team. We'll get some information about the donor and then assist um, if we can to hold it while you get that taken care of. Okay. Here's another question from someone. They say, a donor I'm interested in has a genetic risk that I've never heard of, and I'm having difficulty looking up information on it. Who can or should I talk to to get more information about this? What we can do, we would recommend that they reach out to us by phone, um, our CS team, and then we'll get some information in regards to um, the disorder, the name, and then we will connect them with our genetic counselor on site. Um, if they're not available, we'll get the information and have them uh, follow up. Uh, and then we can hopefully clarify things a bit from there. Um, also, we would recommend that the genetic testing, which is free to download on our website, it can be printed. We always recommend that you print that out, share it with your clinic, and they also should be able to give you some advice as well. Great. Um, would you be able to provide more information on CMV status? Sure. So CMV or cytomegalovirus is a very common virus that most Americans are exposed to at some point in their life. I believe the latest statistics are something like 50 to 65 percent of our population is going to be what we would call CMV positive. What is When you see a donor is listed as CMV positive, what that means is that that donor at some point in their life was was um, exposed to CMV and had an immune response and basically developed antibodies to it. So CMV total antibody positive means that there has been a previous infection or exposure to the virus. It does not mean that that donor is infectious. It doesn't mean that he will transmit CMV to you through use of that donor sperm. And in fact, we actually do a PCR DNA-based, it's PCR is polymerase chain reaction, 
it's a type of DNA testing on our donor sperm. So if a donor is CMV positive, actually whether the donor is CMV positive or negative, we do CMV NAT testing to ensure that the semen samples are negative for virus. So some physicians feel strongly that if you are CMV negative, you should be using a CMV negative donor. Other physicians don't advise their patients to do that because they know that the sperm itself would not be infectious based on the NAT testing. I would always recommend that you go with your medical provider's recommendation when choosing a donor based on CMV status. All right, another question here is, what is your policy on the number of pregnancies per donor? How is this tracked? This is a fantastic question. <clears throat> so our company decided that internally, um, back in 2008, we were going to start tracking families and limiting, to, not start tracking, we'd always been tracking, but that we would limit families in the United States to 25. Now, this is um, challenging because we have to rely on you, the recipients, to report the births to us. Your clinic or physician can also report your birth, the birth to us, but you know there is a very easy, simple way for you to do it right online. There's a link in our newsletter, there's a link on the website where you just have to enter specific information to report the birth. When we have 25 families reported, we stop distributing donor sperm from that donor to new families. That doesn't mean that somebody who already has a birth couldn't get additional samples to have a sibling. When we say a family, that doesn't mean one child, it means one family, it could be multiple children. This is based on uh, the self-reported births from our clients. So we really do try to make it easy for all of you to report your births and pregnancies to us. And I would also recommend that if you report a pregnancy, please be sure to follow up and report the birth once that's occurred as well. Um, with that information, we can track more, um, more accurately and really keep the numbers down. Great. We have a few uh, people who are joining us today from the UK. Um, so we have a couple different questions about, you know, if they're able to send um, sperm to the UK and how much it costs to get shipped. And then also someone else is asking, do they need to click on the UK um, little icon specifically that that donor search? Yes, so great question. Um, we do ship to the UK very frequently. We even have a UK search, which sounds like uh, somebody was referencing. If you are going to be shipping to the UK, you definitely want to use this search um, because these donors have met all the criteria uh, for shipping into the UK. So very important, you're on this search only. Um, shipping is currently a flat fee of $230 uh, USD to ship to the UK. So Christy, just to, just to uh, let you know, when you were saying that, I, I demonstrated how they would do that. And yes. right now we have 136 guys on that UK search. That's right. Mm -hmm. Here's a question. It says, how often do you get new donors? Do you advertise through clinics? Do you request retired donors to return? So I can address that. We are constantly getting new donors. We're constantly recruiting and bringing new donors into each of our six locations. We recruit and um, screen our donors um, in six different cities. We're in Austin and Houston, Texas. We're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Pasadena, California, Fairfax, Virginia, and Roseville, Minnesota. So we are constantly recruiting um, and bringing new guys into the program and retiring donors um, over time. So it's, it's sort of a constant flow of new and old. And uh, those new donors are announced on the web. I had mentioned if you were to do the ULA with the club access, you would get a preview of any new donors for about a week before they go on the catalog available for sale to everyone else. Um, in terms of do we advertising for what the way that we do that, actually, Morgan, do you want to speak to, to that question? Sure, we do lots of different advertising um, online mostly to attract people who are looking to help people uh, in needs, families in needs, um, who have that sort of altruistic side to them and they want to do something good to help people. So we do that through so all sorts of ads online. Um, you might have seen them if you're located in those six cities, but yeah. But what about advertising through clinics? Do like can you talk a little bit about how the physicians and medical providers might get information about the cryobank? 
Yeah, so we do attend a lot of events in the industry. We have um, a big presence there. We also uh, work with the clinics. We have a, a salesperson who goes out and meets with the clinics. So we have great relationships with a lot of clinics as well. And so we also have brochures that we send out to clinics and everything. So if you tell your clinic you're working with us, they probably have worked with us previously and are familiar with Fairfax. Great. We, we do have a couple questions about home insemination. And I know we covered this more in depth during our home insemination webinar, but some people are asking about what bio preparation type is best for home insemination. Sure, so I would recommend if the donor has an ICI prep available that that's what you use for a home insemination. And that could be a standard ICI or two ICI art vials. That would be ideal. If there aren't ICI vial preps available, you can use an IUI prep or an IUI art prep for your at-home insemination. And someone wants to know, how many vials do you need for IVF to be safe to have enough potential for siblings? So if you're doing IVF, um, I would recommend that you just start with purchasing at least one vial. Um, if you are gonna do several rounds of IVF, I would purchase at least one vial per round. Um, starting out, the hope is that you're gonna be able to have the medical providers create several embryos in that first round. Um, you know, you can always purchase more than you need. And if you store on site with us, you can return those. And Christy could talk a little bit more about the detail there. Um, but again, I would always go with your medical provider's recommendation. Yes, so in regards to purchasing and storing with us, um, one of the great perks about storing with Fairfax is that as long as the vials never leave our facility, um, you can always return them back to us for a 50% buyback. Um, you have to complete uh, one simple form and then we can start that process. Uh, what's great about Fairfax is that there's no time limit on that. So if 10 years down the line you want to return them back to us, you can, um, only stipulation being that uh, the vials have never shipped out of our facility. And that that's, doesn't mean only Fairfax, Virginia. You can actually s store at any of our six locations. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And they, they would still be eligible for return. Exactly right. Speaking of um, folks who are local, um, we have some people who are located um, in the area and they want to know about picking it up themselves, if that saves them on shipping or anything. Yes, we do offer local pickup um, if they're local to Fairfax uh, location and many of our other locations, um, we can assist you with that with a pickup. Uh, we do require that you at least give us um, a minimum of a few business days in advance, but if picking up specifically at the Fairfax, Virginia location, it's free of charge. Shipping fees could um, incur in going to some of the other laboratories, but we still offer it. Um, and feel free to call our CS team and we can let you know exactly how that would work. Uh, Christy, do we offer a military discount? We do, yes, great question. Um, so as long as you can um, provide us with uh, some sort of proof, usually our clients will just provide us with a copy of their military ID. Um, we're happy to provide you with 10% off all semen vial purchases. Great. And we have a question here about what is the success rate of ICI at home? So it's slightly lower than IUI and it's slightly lower with frozen sperm than with fresh sperm. The, um, again, I, anybody who's interested in home insemination, I'd recommend that you go back and watch our home insemination webinar. We had a nurse practitioner on that talked in detail about all of these things. Generally um, through, uh, I'm sorry, generally at each cycle, you have between a 10 and 20% chance of achieving pregnancy. That's just any, anybody in a healthy fertility age with no known fertility issues. Um, it's around 15% average per cycle. The success rate of a home in SEM, it's usually between 12 and 15%. The IUI is up there in the 15% range, which is very similar to sort of like a traditional um, intercourse uh, success rate. Christy, here's a question for you. It, um, they want to know if we are able to offer referrals to fertility clinics and any clinics that we work together with. 
Yes. So if you are if they're able to reach out to our CS team, um, you can provide us with a city and state that's closest to you, and then we're happy to provide you with some options that uh, of clinics centers that are already in our database and already registered, and we can definitely assist with that. Mm -hmm. um, another question here: Why don't all donors have adult photos? Some of the donors are not uh, comfortable sharing an adult photo um, they would rather not so it is it is something that is an op it used to be an opt-in uh, program we have now started asking that all of our donors work with one of our contracted professional photographers to provide an adult photo they can opt out if they're not comfortable with that uh, and michelle do you disclose when the sperm was collected from the donor um I, this but well the vials have their production date on them so it's not really disclosed but it's on there <laughs> like it's not something you can choose on the website mm -hmm. you, if you recall on the um on the search if you were to click on the donor profile it does tell you the age range when the donor was donating so that information's there and then the actual specimen date is on each individual vial and speaking of vials and everything um someone wants to know how the price of a vial is based on what exactly they want to know. Can you elaborate? Um, I'm not really sure I understand. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. I, Go ahead, Christy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so I, I think what you're, that uh, person's asking is how is price determined? Uh, yes, for per oh. vial type. Okay. Um, so yes, the final price will be determined by a few things. Number one, the preparation type, um, which Michelle talked about earlier. Um, a a pre-washed specimen will be more expensive than, than an unwashed specimen. And then the other determiner of the price is going to be the category of the donor. Um, so for example, an ID donor or an open donor will have a different price associated than a non-ID. So that's really where you're going to see the main um, differences, the preparation type and the category. And then we have a couple of questions too as, we, as we're wrapping up here. A few questions about webinars. Someone wants to know how do we find past webinars? Um, so I, I can answer that question. If you go to our website and you find the video clip page by going to the About Fairfax Cryo Bank um, drop down, going to updates and then videos, you'll be able to see all of our past webinars will be posted here, including this one as well. So you can find the home insemination one and the genetic counseling or genetic screening one there as well. So yep. you can see that here on the screen. Actually, I'm still on the UK, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to go back to the US. Yeah. <laughs> I also think that you can access them through the blog. Um, there are yes. blog posts. Mm -hmm. And we post them on social media as well. So that they're everywhere. We try to put them on our YouTube channel as well. Um, if you wanna, if you're ever having a hard time finding anything, our client services team is happy to direct you or send you the link uh, directly as well. So, um, and then we have another question about webinars. Someone was asking if we have any future webinar plans. Michelle, did you wanna speak to that? Yeah, sure. I'm excited to let you all know that in July, we're going to be doing a webinar that reviews the details of our donor screening. Um, I will be presenting that. We haven't set a date yet, but we'll have it set soon. Um, it's going to overview how we recruit and screen the donors to ensure that they are high quality for all of you recipients. Great. Okay. Anything you want to wrap up with, Morgan, or should we? No, we are just we have so many questions, everyone. So as Michelle uh, mentioned, we will be doing a blog post just to get to questions that were not answered. We apologize that we were not able to get to any of them. We appreciate everyone putting those in. So everyone, um, yeah, just keep an eye out for that blog post to come out soon. And I just want to say thank you to Morgan for being on and organizing the webinar today for moderating our questions. And a big thank you to Christy. You were a great resource for us today in the Q&A. And sure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to everyone who logged on today. We appreciate your support of Fairfax Cryobank, and we hope to work with you in your future. Thanks and have a great day.